Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Hey, are you guys ready for another epic testing video? Well, I sure am. And so today's video is my under eye concealer testing for mature skin. Being a mature person, I have most of the under eye problems that people will have. I have some discoloration. I have a little like blue purpley in the inner corners. I have a little puffiness and I also have nice uh, wrinkles under there. Now, of course, everyone is going to have different levels of these. Some people have hereditary genetic uh, dark circles under their eyes. Some people have more puffiness and true eye bags. Uh, other people have a lot of wrinkles. So I picked up 10 different concealers and put them to the Angie test. What the Angie test involved this time was wearing each concealer for one day. I applied them all pretty much the same, which was with either fingers or a blending sponge. I would moisturize that area and then I would apply the concealer. I uh, left it unset under one eye and then I would set it with a powder under the other eye. I used the same powder for every one. It's the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores HD powder so we could see what the finish of the uh, concealer was on its own as well as if the powder helped or hurt the look of the under eye area. Then I'd come back to the camera in five hours and again in 10 hours so that we could see how it wore throughout the day, when it broke down, when the wrinkles started looking really bad. I took the pictures um, with my face, straight face, no smile, little smile, and then a great big smile so that we could all take a look at my under eye wrinkles up close and personal and see if concealer actually made them look worse, bigger, <laughs> huge, scary. And I gotta say, I was really surprised by some of these results. And the last thing I wanted to say before we get started is that I'm not a makeup artist. And so my application might not be perfect and consistent from day to day, but I think that's okay. I'm testing things as, from the standpoint of an average person who uses makeup like in their bathroom. The other thing is that of course I'm putting this on my skin and my skin will be different from your skin and my personal preferences of what I like might be different from what you like. All right, so the first one and therefore the worst one is by Makeup Atelier. This is their fluid concealer. It retails for $18 for 0.253 ounces and it comes in 15 shades. This comes with a small doe foot applicator. This one I picked up in the shade FLWA2. Uh, that is like a medium apricot color. It's a thin fluid, but yet it's creamy. So the reason this one landed in the bottom is because it's just kind of got a sheer coverage. So I couldn't even build it up, especially at the inner corners of my eyes. It gave me that scaly look at the inner corners that I really don't like. And when I smiled, I felt like my wrinkles looked bigger from the get go. This one also settled into my wrinkles, whether I set it or not. Next up is a brand that I'm not too familiar with, but people have asked me to try some of their products. I see other YouTubers talking about it, and that is the Catrice brand. This is their liquid camouflage high coverage concealer. It retails for $5.99 for 0.16 ounces, and it comes in three shades. This has a very flowery, almost, it smells like hairspray to me actually. It comes with a small doe foot applicator. The shade I got is in light beige 020. The color is a very pale yellow and this is the darkest shade that they offer. It's a really thick, creamy, slightly tacky liquid. It doesn't blend very smoothly. It's more difficult to blend at the outer edges. It didn't cover darkness at the inner corners very well. I would consider this a sheer to medium coverage. It did look thin and patchy and scaly at the inner corners, giving those short diagonal wrinkles much more play. When smiling, even a small smile, the wrinkles looked way bigger. So not a great start for me with Catrice. Next up is Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. This is $21 for 0.20 ounces and it comes in six shades. This is an unscented formula and it also has a little doe foot applicator. This is a lightweight fluid liquid that is surprisingly difficult to blend. The under eye area looks much improved from a distance, but up close it looks scaly at the inner corners and gathers under my eyes where it didn't blend well. It immediately starts breaking up in the diagonal lines at the inner corners. For the puffiness, the luminosity doesn't help the look of puffiness on its own, so it really needs to be set. It's really good at covering discolorations for most of the day, but it looks scaly and faded at the inner corners within five hours. 
Next up is the brand new concealer from NARS. This is their Soft Matte Complete Concealer. It retails for $30 for 0.21 ounces and it comes in 16 shades. I got light 2.75 and that is called Canelli. But I gotta say the shades are not the same as in the Radiant Concealer because in the Radiant I wear Custard Medium 1 and in this one the Custard was way too dark. So even though they have the same names, it's not the same colors. This is unscented and it comes in this little pot. It is a very stiff cream. It really needs the warmth of your fingers to warm it up in order to make it blendable. I did try to blend it with a sponge and that just didn't work out very well. It offered medium to full coverage. It was buildable, but I gotta say the finish is not matte. Um, I found this to be fairly radiant. Darkness is covered. The color correcting is good. Uh, I feel like the wrinkles look the same or slightly diminished on the powdered side, especially when I'm smiling. Uh, but it does start settling into wrinkles on the non-powdered side within minutes. Coming back at the five hour check-in, it had settled into wrinkles under both eyes, including the one with the setting powder, and my wrinkles appeared magnified. It looks scaly and patchy at the inner corners. It was wearing off and looking dry. I actually had started doing this review, including NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, uh, but I decided that I didn't want to have two NARS concealers in here. When it was in this testing, it was coming in at the last position, so it was absolutely the worst for me. All right, next up is one that I use all the time and was really liking and thought looked great until I did the testing. And that is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. This retails for $28 for 0.16 ounces, making this the most expensive one. It does have a small doe foot applicator and it is unscented. I picked this one up in light neutral and it has a little bit of a peachy undertone. This is a creamy liquid. This one blends really super easily. I really liked how this one blended. Um, the coverage was sheer to medium and the dark darkness was not completely covered. It looks slightly scaly at the inner corners and the luminous finish accentuates the puffiness. When smiling, the wrinkles looked larger on the non-set side at the five hour check-in, this one looked exactly the same as when it was just applied. So the wrinkles didn't look worse and it wasn't starting to wear off. At the 10 hour check-in, it was only slightly faded overall. All right, you guys, we have rounded the corner. We're out of the bottom five and we're into the top four. So at the bottom of the top four is Makeup Forever Ultra HD Invisible Cover Concealer. This is $27 for 0.23 ounces and it comes in 14 shades. It is unscented and it comes in just a squeezy tube with a little bit of a round end that is supposed to be used as an applicator, but I tried it that way and really did not find that to be a successful use. I got this one in the shade R32, which is a very peach tone, but it does look natural once it goes on. This formula is a fairly thick, stiff formula that is very easy to blend. It gives you solid, full, opaque coverage. It really covers darkness and uh, the peach tones do color correct very well. It does have a luminous finish. When set, it does diminish puffiness all day. Because of the thick, stiff formula, the wrinkles look larger on the non-set side when smiling. It settles into wrinkles within five hours if it's not set, um, but it doesn't settle if it is set. It makes wrinkles look larger and skin look drier by the end of the day. All right, next up and third from the top is one that I had included in my best of 2016 video because I had worn it a few times and really liked it, but I was kind of on the fence about it. And so I really needed to put it in this testing video to see if it was really that great. Um, it is kind of really that great because it is in the top and that is the Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer. This retails for $24 for 0.3381 ounces and it comes in 14 shades. It is a large container and it comes with a whopper of an oversized doe foot applicator. And this has quite a strong scent. It smells flowery or lemony. The shade I got this in is in Light Medium Honey. And this is a very thick, very creamy, very opaque concealer. It's a little stiff, so it's not the easiest to blend. And surprisingly, it's easier to blend when more is applied. When it's first applied, both eyes look definitely improved. The darkness is covered. The puffiness appears reduced, definitely more on the set eye than the non-set eye. Considering how much I applied though, it didn't really settle into wrinkles very much at all on the non-set side. On the side with the setting powder, 
no settling at all. But when smiling, the wrinkles look slightly bigger on the non-set side and slightly smoothed on the set side. So five hours in, it was starting to wear off and look patchy and scaly at the inner corners. Are you noticing a trend here? The wrinkles on the side that I powdered actually look smaller at the five hour mark. But sadly, the wrinkles on the non-powdered side look larger and deeper and more magnified. At the 10 hour check-in, it was majorly worn off at the inner corners, looking scaly and accentuating those diagonal inner corner lines, but the wrinkles looked way bigger and skin around them looked dry and was showing more smaller wrinkles. All right, drum roll please, we're into the top two. This was kind of a tight race, neck and neck for number one, but the number one spot eked out number two just by a tiny margin. So the number two concealer is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser. This is $9.99 for 0.2 ounces and it comes in six shades. This has a smell though, but it doesn't seem scented. Uh, and it has this foamy applicator ball. I don't really love this puffer. I don't really love how it gets all over the cap. I picked it up in the shade Light Slash Fair, which is too light for me. This formula is a thick and creamy formula. It blends pretty well, but it needs a little extra work to blend out seamlessly at the outer edges. The coverage is sheer to medium, but it is buildable. The finish is a satin finish, so no luminosity to make your puffiness or eye bags look big and overly bright. With setting powder, this does not settle into wrinkles. Without setting powder, this barely settles into wrinkles. Darkness and puffiness look diminished, and wrinkles appear bigger on the not set side and slightly smoothed on on the set side. Up close, it's not the smoothest and it looks a little bit broken up and patchy on the surface. At the five hour check-in, it actually didn't look too bad. The um, set side is smoother and looks better even when smiling. The wrinkles look smaller. And on the onset side, they look slightly darker and it's not too worn off. At the 10 hour check-in, it was worn off at the inner corners, but otherwise it was looking pretty good. It was still smoothing for the wrinkles on the eye with the setting powder and not settled on the eye without the setting powder. No one was more shocked than me that this actually came in at the second position, but there is one that I like just a little bit better that ekes it out. And I'm so glad that it landed here because this is one that has been my tried and true, one that I've been wearing constantly for years that I'm wearing today because it is my favorite. There's just something about it that I love so much. And that is the Lancome Episarin Waterproof Long Lasting Under Eye Concealer. Uh, retails for $31 for a half an ounce and it comes in 13 shades. So if you actually take that price and the amount that you get in here, that puts this in the $15 price range for a quarter of an ounce. So it makes it very competitive even with the Maybelline. It comes in a squeezy tube and it is unscented. The shade I have it in is 250 Light Bisque. Uh, this is a highly pigmented, creamy formula. It is easy to blend. It's a sheer to medium buildable coverage concealer. It offers better coverage with the fingers or with a brush than with the sponge. But on the side that I applied it with my fingers at heavier coverage, it actually looked much, much nicer than on the sponge side applied with sheer coverage. On the heavier coverage side, the darkness is completely covered. The concealer is smooth. Um, although it did settle into one wrinkle right from the get-go, the one closest up to my eyelashes. On the sponge side, the coverage is much sheerer, but the color correction is still very good. It looks slightly scaly on the sponge side where it is applied sheer. And when smiling, the wrinkles look the same on the non-set side, but they actually look smoother on the set side than they do in the before picture without makeup. So at the five hour check-in, it was starting to wear off at the inner corners. It had major settling on the non-set side. On the set side, the wrinkles were still smoother and minimized. Even in the big smiling picture, the wrinkles on the set side look smaller than they did in the before picture. On the, on the side where I didn't set it, the wrinkles were looking big and accentuated and everything. At the 11 and a half hour check-in, it is worn off at the inner corners with the darkness showing through. The wrinkles look slightly larger now when smiling, but overall the under eye area looks better than it did in the before picture. So I'm not sure that I found a 100% perfect under eye concealer out of any of these, but I did learn quite a few things. I felt like this was an amazing learning experience, this video, and 
So um, here are a few of the things that I did learn that I wanted to pass on to you, and maybe you noticed it in the pictures as well. What I noticed most of all is that under eye concealer definitely helps <laughs> once you have some things going on under there. My eyes at least with under eye concealer on, just about any under eye concealer, look better than my eyes without any under eye concealer. The other thing is that setting powder is definitely your friend. Uh, I wasn't sure when I started this how this was going to go. You know, I like to keep my mind open and let the results come to me as they may. But I have heard repeatedly, and when people ask me this question, I would always say, yes, I think that, you know, using a, a, a product heavily and then setting it with a setting of powder is definitely going to make your under eye wrinkles look worse. And what I found out through this testing video is that that is not necessarily the case. What I did find with the last two concealers, or the last three concealers actually, is that they work so beautifully with a nice light coat of setting powder that they actually made my wrinkles on the setting powder side look diminished for most of the day. And that's pretty amazing. To have it actually smooth and make your bigger wrinkles look nicer, yeah, that is something. So. Based on this, I think that even on mature skin, heavier coverage looks better than lighter coverage. Especially, you know, if you have darkness or, you know, puffy eye bags or puffiness. I had been in the past applying with a tiny brush, just the tiny bit of concealer just on the dark side of my eye bag. And then what I was noticing is when I'd film a video or see myself, I could see it would make it look more ripply. Whereas where I applied any of these in a thicker coating, a heavier coating, so it was really like opaquely covering everything from kind of the inner nose all the way over to here, that it just looked better. It smoothed the entire area. You didn't have that like ripliness of where the puffiness was. I think overall it just looks so, so much better as long as it's using a good concealer and is blended nicely. You know, I don't think you need to make that giant triangle, you know, just keep it right up in there where your eye problems are blend it well, add the setting powder, and it gives a much more perfected look than doing it the way that I used to do it. And the third little lesson that I learned from this is that luminous finishes that claim that they're going to brighten your under eye area really don't do anything for mature skin. Those only work if you have beautiful, perfect, flat skin under your eyes. It's, it's my age old problem with makeup. Anything luminous shines off the high points of things and makes the shadows look darker. So it actually makes your bags look bigger. It actually makes your puffiness look bigger. You can definitely use a luminous uh, concealer, but I think that setting it with a nice matte translucent powder is the way to go. Now I just need to work on finding an under eye primer that I can put on in the inner corner that will make all of these last in there longer so that my under eyes will look better for the entire day and not just for five hours. So I'm going to get on that and I will report back soon, I hope. So that's it for the video for today, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful and informative. And as always, everybody, I thank you for your time. I really appreciate your watching, especially longer videos like this. But I mean, we covered nine concealers, so that is a pretty good day. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody, and take care, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.